Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson of Fairburns Associates. It's Wednesday, April 6th. In my previous update, I talked about the possibility of an inadvertent criticality occurring in Fukushima 1. And that was based on four things. It was based on um, a neutron beam being detected 13 times. It was based on uh, the presence of chlorine 38. It was based on uh, tellurium 129 being detected. And it was based on iodine 131 and 132 being detected. Well, since I made that, uh, that, that update to you, um, TEPCO, Tokyo Electric, has pulled the report upon which I based it. The, um, the tellurium data, they say, is no longer accurate. Now, when you're in a, in a mode like Tokyo Electric is in, you would hope that the information you're using is accurate, and that's a, a serious concern that um, inaccurate information is being used in decision making at, at TEPCO. There's a couple, this isn't the only time, there's a couple of these instances uh, when the neutron beam re report came out, um, TEPCO denied that, uh, despite the fact that the quote was from their own spokesman. Um, there was a report of um, incredibly high radiation in the ocean, and TEPCO denied that and lowered the report. Still incredibly high, but 100 times lower. And, and Dr. Richard Leahy, uh, General Electric scientist of, of great renown, was quoted that Unit 2 had had a meltdown. Um, and uh, Again, TEPCO denied that. So I, I guess I'm concerned about, one, the reliability of information coming out of TEPCO, but also the, the fact that what appears to be happening in private at TEPCO is not being relayed to the public. It's not just TEPCO that this is occurring with. Uh, today, the New York Times ran a story about um, uh, a report circulated within the Nuclear Regulatory Commission dating back to March 26th, where the um, NRC staff has identified significant problems and dangers at Fukushima. Basically, we're not out of the woods yet. The, um, um, the problems that the staff is aware of, but yet not really sharing with Congress or, or with the general public, include the fact that there's an awful lot of mud inside this nuclear reactor. Now, we've been talking about that for a week or more because of the seawater that's been injected into the reactor. It's not coming out. Uh, and, and it's building up inside. Well, the NRC is concerned about that too. They just didn't tell you and I. They're concerned that the weight of the building with all this water in it uh, might make it unstable in the case of an earthquake. They're concerned that a recriticality, like we talked about last time, um, might occur. They're also concerned about, about hydrogen being recreated and another explosion um, occurring. And finally, they're also concerned about plutonium, which likely was ejected from the fuel pools during the explosions. Now, the NRC believes that this plutonium was ejected several miles away from the reactor and is also on site and may have been bulldozed into the soil. Well, all this is happening inside the NRC. They're telling Congress and you and I that you know, the situa situation is difficult but, but under control. It's not just the NRC that's saying this, it's um, large nuclear corporations, including one called Arriva, uh, which is a French nuclear conglomerate, um, probably one of the largest in the industry. As reported in the New York Times on, uh, on March 23rd, there was an invitation-only meeting at Stanford University on the 21st of March. So this is 10 days after the accident, where um, uh, Arriva presented a, por a report indicating some pretty significant problems that the public was not being made aware of. And uh, we've been able to get a hold of the Areva report that was presented there. Now the Areva report is pretty damning, but in fact there's information in it that's wrong. And it's, um, uh, and I will next time be discussing, in fact, um, the problems with the Areva report that actually make the situation worse. But the Areva report, talks about the fact that it's known that the nuclear fuel in all three reactors reached 5,000 degrees. Now that's beyond the melting point of stainless steel and beyond the melting point of zircaloy, which means that a, a, um, the disintegration of the core is pretty obvious. The Areva report talks about Unit 2 in particular and identifies that the core, um, that the containment was breached by a hydrogen explosion. 
And you know, we look at units one, three, and four and see the roof blown off, and two looks pretty good. What happened at unit two, though, was that the hydrogen built up inside and somehow ignited. That's unknown why. And sort of like a sneeze with your nose closed, you're going to pop your eardrums. Well, that's what happened at um, unit two, but it, it, it likely breached the containment. So Ariva and the nuclear industry know that and, and really haven't been sharing it with us. The other thing that Ariva report talks about is that they recommend control of crops and dairy products out to 50 kilometers. That's about 30 miles away from the plant. That means that they believe that radiation has, has exceeded well beyond what the emergency uh, evacuation zone is and that both crops and dairy products may be contaminated. Ariva also spends a lot of time uh, talking about Unit 4. Now that's the one that has no fuel in the reactor, but exploded anyway. And they basically said that, that this was a core melt in fresh air. The reason the core melted on Unit 4, Ariva believes, is that the fuel pool cracked from the earthquake. So the water didn't boil out of Unit 4, like we've been led to believe. There was a crack in the fuel pool from the earthquake, and now with no water, a zircaloy hydrogen reaction was inevitable. The last thing that uh, the Ariva report uh, notices is that, is that this was probably the largest release is coming from Unit 4 because there's no containment. And they basically say all of the fission products can, uh, can be volatilized. Well, finally, industry insiders uh, who are aware of the Ariva uh, presentation have told me that the person who presented the presentation said this. It's, it's almost an exact quote. Clearly, we are witnessing one of the greatest disasters in modern time. Well, in the private meetings, Ariva is saying that this is, a, this is a serious issue. But in public, the nuclear renaissance continues to move forward, both within the nuclear industry and within the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. I will update you on, the, uh, on this Ariva report and identify the problems within it in my next presentation. Um, but I wanted to let you know that I will be trying to filter out from all of these sources, reliable information to pass on to you in the future.